All right, well, I got slightly ahead of myself. Got, got one of the light bars. Got it apart. And uh, took it out. Uh, Oxygen v, v Series 42 inch, one of them. This is the uh, Bluetooth module. This is the standard relay harness. It's got both the in for the Bluetooth module and then for the light bar. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to link then this one for the light bar, and I'm going to have to link then this one for the RGB harness because they don't make it long enough to go to the roof. Um, and they don't make any extension harnesses. At one point in time, I could find an extension harness for the for the uh, for a light bar, just randomly around eBay. I can't find them anymore. I can only find the pigtails. It's this, and then like a foot and a half of just rank, uh, standard wire. Uh, so I'll just cut and splice these. I got some. Uh, I bought two uh, 100 foot rolls of uh, 12 gauge, so I'll use that. For this, I got I got some of this, which is a, a ten foot of the rock light extensions. Um, I'll just uh, anyway, it's got the screw ends on it, waterproof. I'll cut those off and uh, wire them and wire them into this. Cut this plug off and then. Put this plug back up on the roof. Um, this gives me a lot thinner wire to work with. Um, so, yeah, and then also got me a nice set of wrenches, which I've never had. Got that with some uh, graduation money, but uh, here is where I decided to put it. I don't have a roof rack yet. When I have a roof rack, the roof rack will come up to about right here, and I'll move the light bar up to the front of the roof rack. But as of right now, I got it as far up on the factory roof rack, drilled the holes, and then put it right here. Already got it mounted. Should be almost centered. So uh, I got that mounted. Now all I got to do is run all the wiring. So uh, I'll start to run some of the wiring. And I'll be back. All right. Well, I have some stuff ran. I got to get me either an S pod or a, a big fuse box fuse box uh, that's got like I don't know 10, 15, maybe 20 fuse slots in it, and mount that somewhere. Uh, maybe I really wanted an S pod. That way, I could have the relays and everything too. It's not going to be an official S pod, but I decided to mount the relay right here next to. Uh, I think this is the relay that goes to my uh, front bumper lights. It used to go to the, it used to go to that light bar, but now it goes to those bumper lights. Um, sometimes I wish I didn't have the uh, the GM truck box, but I do use it. I got you know, automatic transmission fluid. I got power steering fluid. I got some got a funnel and some other stuff. But, um, right now I have it top off, but uh, Bluetooth module is right there. Drill some holes on the side of the box, zip tied to the box, and then, you know, just put the, uh, put the uh, put the top back on it. And both tops on it. There it goes. HIDs, but uh, <clears throat> this this is how long that plug is for the relay till you can go to the Bluetooth box. Granted, I have it wrapped around once or twice, but that it's only about that long, so you don't have a lot of room to mess around with that. Um, so uh, you got to mount it close. Um, this goes to the to the uh, light bar for the color change. And as you see, <clears throat> I 
even going in a straight line, it is not even long enough. Going in a straight line. By the time I mount it through all the, by the time I mount it through the fender, <clears throat> mount it through the fender, it probably go up to maybe right here. Uh, which I'm gonna cut this end off anyway. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna use that thin wire. I might even bundle all this up down here, and then so all I have to route through my uh, weather stripping is this, which is very thin. <clears throat> Because I'm going to mount it. I'm actually going to mount it inside. Oops. Sorry for the camera work. Mount it down inside here. The, 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 right, the drip rail. There's plenty of room down in here. I'm going to run it all the way down through here. Then bring it up right here between the doors. Bring it up through here tied up there the switch I'm probably gonna put the switch up there as my other switches um, I'm not gonna use the switch that came with it I got a link in the wire for the switch too um, this where is that extra wire did I close it inside no I didn't Oops. something is catch I just want to snap down all the way. Where is it? This. This right here. All this extra cable. It's supposed to have the, the push button on it to cycle through the preset colors in white. Uh, and you can hold it down and it'll turn it off. I don't think I'm going to have this connected or even right inside the vehicle. I'll probably drop this inside this box and put this, I don't know, in the glove box. So in case Bluetooth dies, I can at least cycle through the colors if I need, if I actually need the light bar, uh, if I want it on or whatever. Um, I have this inside on my Jeep. I, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm probably going to tuck the wiring up somewhere up under the dash and put this. <laughs> my Jeep does not have a lot of room in anything. I got to clean it out. But uh, put this somewhere in my Jeep also. Um, because honestly, I'm not going to want a push button for to change it. I don't need a push button on the dash anywhere. Um, but, uh, and of course, you know, these little relay harnesses they give you the light bars only have about that much room for the power. So, I got some 12 gauge. I, shoot, I just dropped the fuse. I don't have any con uh, conduit right now, but I'm going to, I don't have any quarter inch conduit. I have half inch. Um, conduit wow um, I mean yeah no but uh, I don't have any quarter inch I don't have any quarter inch so uh, I gotta get some more quarter inch but uh, this is the I got it right here again I need a, a, a fuse block <laughs> bad um, I, I plan on getting a dual post battery but I mean this battery brand new I just I swapped it under warranty a couple months ago so it's it's brand new so yeah so I'm stuck with this for at least another two years two and a half years um, but I'm gonna get me a, an Odyssey dual post battery um, and uh, but still uh, I still plan on getting that the, the knockoff s pod or a, a, a bit at least a big separate fuse box term terminal uh, and maybe a fuse box, fuse box and relay terminal if I can find one of those. Or I'll make my own somewhere. Uh, they're not that, that hard to make. Um, and mount it somewhere in the engine bay. Uh, if I didn't have the box, I'd mount it there. I'd mount it there. Um, who knows, I might end up clearing out that box and using that box and put a whole bunch of, put a, a fuse blocks on the bottom of it and use it for relays and stuff and then just... I could take all the anything that I was putting there. I got a spot in the back I can put it in inside one of the uh, panels. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, wiring like crazy, but uh, 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 yeah, that's where I'm at so far. There's the wiring I use. I got a hundred foot of that. Uh, this is a switch, but I have. Sorry. I got a bag that's got a whole bunch of rocker switches in it. I got a bag that's got 
10, well, it's got nine of them because I've already used one. It's got nine of those switches. Oops. It's got nine of those switches. Um, they're all the same. The reason I got nine of them is because when I measured it out, I can actually put ten switches up there. Am I going to end up putting ten switches up there? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> Because that's a lot of wiring. Though if I get the S-Pod, putting 10 switches up there is nothing. Because it's basically it's just it's a telephone cord. Or I can make my own S-Pod. It's pretty easy to make your own S-Pod. And then you just use an uh, Ethernet cord. And just put real wire an Ethernet cord. And all you have is uh, an Ethernet cord that uh, powers the relay. So, uh, Cat5. Cat5 Ethernet cord. Um, I don't think you can run 10 switches off of it. But... Uh, and then all you have is an Ethernet cord that runs up there. That, that, that that's the only thing that powers the switches. Um, but yeah, let me uh, continue this. I got to lengthen. Got to lengthen the main power. Oops, lengthen the main. Uh, that's a lengthen the RBG, uh, RGB wire, and lengthen. The main power wire, which again, after I run that over through here, through the fender, this one's probably only going to go right here. So, yeah. So I got a lot of wiring on that to do. I got to extend. This is the wiring for the switch. I got to extend the wiring for the switch too. This is probably going to be very shaky, <laughs> but uh, shouldn't be as shaky as when I was using my cell phone though. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I gotta lengthen those wires, and then I gotta run the wires inside, oh boy. Yeah, I'll be back. Alrighty, and this is, went inside to eat, took a, about an hour break, and, uh, probably 45 minute break, but, uh, this is, uh, that, uh, thin cable I was telling you about. Really, 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 really tiny wires. I mean, really tiny wires. And then these out of the uh, what you get with the kit, which again, probably about the same size. Get back in the picture. I don't know what it's going to be trying to focus on. Um, I def I don't have it in macro mode. My phone, my camera, but uh. This is very, very thin uh, sheathing. This is actually pretty thick sheathing, but I honestly think they're about the same in thick wire thickness. But uh, yeah, getting ready to solder. I'll be back. And lighting here is horrible. There's my completed uh, four way solder joint. And I got a zip tie over it, which I, I might delete the zip tie. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's the normal wire. There's the, uh, the rock light extension slash, it's not even rock light extension. Any, pretty much most of the, uh, I say most, from where I get my halos, uh, they've started going with this for their wiring now. It's, uh, it's not the flat, the four flat wire like, uh, you're not be able to see it. It's not the floor flat wire like I got back in there for those things. Even though that's, you might see some. It's too dark, but it's not the floor flat wire. It's uh, these things, which I, I like this. And you can buy extensions for these on eBay for two ten foot for ten bucks. I mean, two ten foot for ten bucks, and the shorter it is, the cheaper they are. So. Uh, so I got, I think I got eight of these things. So uh, when I, I still got those Oxbeam rock lights I need to install on, uh, probably going to put them on this thing. I don't know, I might put them on my Jeep. All I know is I need to buy enough set to put on either or. But, uh, yeah. So uh, I just got to run this. It comes here. And take this, run it back through here. Um, there should be a hole right here. I'm going to go into the fender, through that hole, come up, 
right here there's another hole and that goes straight through the fender right here and then that uh, weather strip the rain guard weather strip is right here in the door oh it's right here and take that go up and put it in and then all I got to do after that find out where I need to cut it then do another solder joint for this for up at the top and after I do that lengthen some power wire yeah lengthen my power wire my Deutsch connector power wire lengthen that bring it up to the top and then all I gotta do is run a switch inside which I don't know if I'm gonna actually wire that switch up tonight I'll probably do what I did to my Jeep run it inside put it on top of the dash and mess with it tomorrow because I'm actually off tomorrow so I'll mess with it tomorrow finish wiring that tomorrow and I might actually go to the Jeep and finish wiring the one on my Jeep because the 32 inch I got on my Cherokee not that one that one is uh, actually still on my uh, still on my dash I haven't messed with it because I haven't because it's been down I haven't been driving it so I hadn't worried about a switch lane on the dash but now that I'm starting to drive it it's kind of bugging me I have a switch lane on the dash so uh I'll uh, probably do the same thing. I'll probably delete the switch that it comes with. And I got a uh, switch on my uh, center console that goes to my reverse lights on the roof that shorted out probably a year and a half ago. Or, or more than that. No, it shorted out when I went to pick up this this thing. Because it was when I was taking the trailer back, they worked. I think they worked. Um, but after that, so it's been about two years since they shorted out, and I've never had them. But I don't even have them connected anymore. Um, uh, so uh, I'll probably use that switch that's on my uh, center console for my Jeep. Um, anyway, uh, let me hurry up and get this thing going. It's almost nine o'clock, which don't have anything to do tomorrow, so it's not like I'm wasting time. But I do want to get that done. Oh, and put those wires into these butt connectors. I decided to save some time and not solder those. I solder most of the stuff, but I've kind of gotten lazy lately. And I don't mind these butt connectors or the weatherproof butt connectors. Those are the only ones I buy now. Yes, they're twenty dollars of twenty dollars or something a friggin' eight pa or a fifty twenty pack whatever that is. Fifty twenty dollars a fifty pack or twenty five dollars a fifty pack whatever, but they're worth it. <coughs> anyway, let's get this thing going. Alrighty. This is what I was talking about. All right, got it going in. I don't know if you can see it, it's there. It is right there, right on top of that relay. Goes in through the fender. Actually, use this extension that I got to get that bolt out of the frame rail. Runs through the fender. Comes out right there. You can see it. There it is at the bottom, and this is the seal right there. The rain guard seal goes all the way up to the top. And then I just got a mark where I need to cut it. And I'm going to make it longer than necessary, though, once I get the roof rack. And it moves forward to about where my, uh, right behind my, uh, uh, bleh, cab lights, uh, clearance lights. Uh, you know, of course, it's going to be shorter, but I'm still going to have to bring it up right there. So... Because I don't want to bring it up right here because the door gets very tight there. So I'm trying to bring it up between the doors. So I'm actually going to need to leave me enough room to actually do that. So, uh, yeah. Let's get that going. I don't actually know how much output this is going to have with it being so far back. But it still should be plenty, plenty enough. I don't think I'll be able to pull in the garage anymore though. Uh, that's one downside. 
but I won't be able to pull in the garage when I get a roof rack on it anyway. So there's a couple trade-offs. Need to get a, a, a pop-up carport thing outside so I can work on stuff outside in the rain. That'd be nice. Whenever I get a couple hundred bucks that I can just throw away, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, when I don't have other stuff to do. Other stuff to do, which is getting parts and things and whatever. Um, but yeah. Valve, co valve cover's dirty. You need to do a little detailing on the engine. Anyway. I got it running down there. Is it tied to there? Uh, yeah, I'll probably go ahead and solder that now. I'll go ahead and do that and probably go ahead and I probably won't show extending the other wire. Um, right here. There's my join right there. There's my join. So, that's just... So, you add the other length of wire that I have, probably go up to... It wouldn't go up to the roof. Probably three quarters up to the windshield. Let's see, from right there, probably about right there. That's probably where the stock harness would stop. Right there. Right there. Around there is where the, where the stock harness would start would stop. So nowhere near enough to do a roof. Even if you mounted it on the firewall, it still wouldn't be enough to do a roof. So uh, that is honestly the only downside I have about this bar uh, the, these uh light bars. Um <laughs> The, that I have about these light bars. Um, uh, is uh, the length of the wiring you get. Um, I mean, you have to... This one, you have to extend two harnesses. And the thing is, they don't make an extension harness. Uh, like I said, I used to be able to find these Deutsch... Like, you can find these Deutsch uh, extensions. Yes, you would have to... You'd have to cut and butt, butt connect or solder or something. But you can get links of these. These with links of wire. You can also buy these connectors. Um, you can buy these connectors too. But this is... I don't think this is... This isn't a this isn't a weather pack connector. And I don't even think this is a Deutsch connector. This is just a... As far as I'm concerned, a no-name uh, weatherproof connector. Um... I know you could buy these if you could figure out what the hell it was. It might be a Molex. I don't know. But, um, uh, yeah, that's the only downside about this light bar. I had the same thing to say uh, when I did my Jeep, and I know Mossman had something to say about it when he did his, uh, when he did Darth Dooley, um, about the wires being short. So, uh, that's really the only downside. If you're mounting it on the bumper or the front of your truck, Jeep, whatever, you'd have wire for days. But you want to go on the roof, you're going to have to, you know, make do and lengthen the wires. So, uh, which is not hard for me, but somebody might get it who doesn't, who can't do that. Who doesn't have the technical skills, I could say, to lengthen the wires. Especially, these wires are fairly easy. You can get buck connectors and, and lengthen these wires. These wires, on the other hand... You're not going to get a butt connector, splice, and crimp these wires together, and have them hold for any length of time. These wires are entirely too small for butt connectors. The only way I can see having a good tight connection on these is solder. So, somebody might get this and like, okay, I'll just lengthen the wires, and then realize how tiny these wires are. Link they could probably lengthen these no problem. Lincoln and then these though, if they don't know how to solder, they're SOL. So uh, just a, a downside to it, but I mean, if they sold extension harnesses of these for the people who can't lengthen the harness, I would still lengthen the harness because how is that going to fit if this was on here? That's not going to fit between the door. When I close the door, that connector is going to break. So, I would still lengthen the harness. But, uh, you know, at least they would, at least if they had that option, I could, I could say that. Or, putting the options, lengthen cable, maybe have a harness that has an extra 10 feet of cable. That's a lot of cable, but that gives you a lot of wiggle room. If I didn't lengthen this relay harness, 
The regular harness would be over by the battery. My brain box would be over by the battery. And this harness would probably only get to here. So, you know. But, that's kind of a rant. But, uh, just, you know, something to think about. Anyway, let me uh, get this done and uh, I'll probably wire it all together. Put that together, probably run the switch through the uh, firewall. I hope I have enough room in that grommet. I don't know if I do. <laughs> I hope I do. Uh, if I don't, well, I'll probably leave, I'll probably leave it in the engine bay and deal with it tomorrow. Uh, anyway, I'll be back. Alrighty, I am done for the night. I got everything on the outside done. Light bar mounted, wires ran. Do not have anything going in the cab yet. But it's eleven. Hmm. 11.15, done. Uh, again, I need to go pick up some conduit for the wire, but got the power wire done. Router across the top with all my other junk. Don't know what that was. Uh, relay, which is very, very hot because I was just had it on. It's warm, let's put it that way. Bluetooth box. <coughs> Got the power wire and the Bluetooth wire ran under there. Then they both come up here, run down through there, run into the fender. <coughs> I go into the fender. Go into the fender, come out right there. I'm in the way. Then I got a zip tie. Oh, I need to cut that zip tie leg. It's going to bug me. Got it ran up through here. Ran it up there. Got a zip tie there holding it down. I didn't think, I didn't want to put zip ties there, but that's actually nice, thick rubber. That's still, I, I thought I was going to push through that and it's going to disintegrate. No, I had to push through it hard. This is a the rubber like the grommets in the firewall. You push a hole, the rubber in the firewall, it just creates a slit. And if you don't keep something in there, it's hard to push it through. At least something small. I got a zip tie there because it tried to go through go through the top. It tried to go up and up there. I put there, there, and there because it, it kept on pooching out. Um, that the, the power wire is a lot thicker. But uh, ran up through there. I'll actually get up here. There it is. Ran through there. There's a zip tie. Get through here where it's all where it's all messed up. <laughs> through there. Through here, another zip tie. Both go up here. I couldn't fit the four connector through there. As you can see, it's all scratched up. I tried to fit it through there, pushed it as hard as I could. It would not go through there. So I ran the four around the outside, but I ran the other one through the inside. Got a whole bunch of wire bunched up right there because, like I said, I plan on getting, excuse me, making a roof rack. And when I make the roof rack, I need to have extra wire. And then run up there, a light bar, light bar's mounted. I got everything all off, 42 inch V-series. Ox beam, mentioned that before. Uh, ooh, ooh, pretty. Uh, 5D lenses. That is nice. Probably not gonna see it in the camera, but it's uh, the LED on my op, uh, iPod is uh, reflecting. Anyway, I gotta fix my roof. That it was just cracking and it's starting to rust. I'm sanding that down, and I got some paint I'm gonna put over it. Not the best paint, but it is color matched paint, so I'll use it. Got all that done. And as of right now, there's the app. Make sure it doesn't die. Here it is. I still need to adjust it, but. Spot beams, flood beams, flood beams. And get back here with the app. Oops, I already changed it. I could do this. Red. 
And remember, these are just accents, and I'll do the shirt later. Green, which is what I'm going to be keeping it on. Blue, which will get you in trouble. Same with red. Yellow, there's yellow. Pinkish purple. Light blue. Of course, white, which I'm on. That's the standard color change, standard color flash, uh, standard color fade, more color flash. That'll get you in trouble. So will that. That's preset. That'll get you in trouble. There's. Probably can't tell. That's the pink that's preset. That's a pink that was just darker. It's not going to focus, but it's a really nice. Oh, I'd probably call it a magenta color. I actually really like that color. Besides green, that's a really nice pink. <laughs> and amber and white. Which is amber and white strobe. And, uh, yeah. Man, that's bright. It's pretty bright, but I think I got it adjusted. I think it's adjusted up, but when I adjust it down, it's going to go straight on the roof. It might even hit the front of my hood, which I don't want to do that. But, uh... There it is. And you can mess with... Uh, I'll go with the magenta, because it's something that's going to not be... It's gonna, oops, close the app. Do you not want to do that? Here's the app. Connect it, and that I think is the rock lights. There's my Jeep light bar, and there's the Yukon. I never named that one. That is the rock lights. Uh, I never named it because I didn't know, know which vehicle I was going to put it in. Uh, magenta, and of course, got the brightness control. You can do the brightness on white too, which is nice if you're uh, actually going to use this as a you know, put it on a Jeep or something, and you're going to use it off-road, you can put it on white and dim your white so you don't blind the person in front of you. Uh, and then, at the flash, of course, the strobe. But, uh, and, uh, I forgot what that is. Oh, that's the setup, uh, because this app uses multiple things. It's got the 4-channel RGB W. Or it's got just RGB or two channel or one channel dimming. If you put it on any of those other ones, it screws stuff up. Music, I uh, don't really. Okay, the app's updated because that's new. Oh yeah, it's new because my it used to be on a whole different page. Music, I don't have a lot of music on here. Mostly, I mean I don't listen to stuff on here. And it basically slashes to the music. I think it's doing it to bass. And, uh, uh, what is that? Oh, okay, so you, so this one, okay, so this app's nice. That did not, that's not green. Yeah, that's not green. Uh, I'm thinking that should, sorry, I'm all over the place. I th thought that should hold it in one, let me do it this way then. Green. 
green. Oops. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, there it goes. The apps that control my RGBs here, I like the app on that one because I can actually adjust the EQ to flash to different patterns. Or excuse me, flash differently like jazz, pop, rock, and classic. And it flashes to different things. This one only has one, but what I do like about this one is that I can actually select the color and have it flash a single color. If I do the uh, the one for my uh, GMC emblem, and that's it right now. When I get my other headlights built, it will be those. Uh, on my Jeep, pretty much all the lights on my Jeep, besides my light bar, uh, use that app. But it cycles through different colors. You can't keep it the same color. I this was new. This was updated where you can get it where you can have one color. I don't remember that. But I mean that's that's something. Eh, I mean, if you were doing a car show or a, a event or a meet, you could uh, put it on that. Have your music playing in your truck or something, and have your lights flashing to that. If you're into that, which eh, it, it it's cool. I don't really go to any meets anymore. Uh, there used to be one uh, that I went to every uh, Saturday night. Every set. Yeah, pretty much about every Saturday night I went to it, and uh, I didn't have all these lights and stuff though. All I had was uh, running lights. I didn't have any color change, and then besides my GMC emblem, so I mean, I was just sitting there. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And you got the microphone and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, that's the light bar, V series, 42 inch, somewhat of install. Um, this video is probably going to be pretty shaky. I've been kind of moving around trying to show stuff, but uh, uh, I, you know, I still haven't ran the switch yet. I plan on doing that tomorrow, maybe, if I get out. Depending on if it rains. If it rains, I, I, I probably won't do it because I can't get the, the truck in the garage anymore. But it um, just depends. I got the next two days off, so I'll probably do it one of those two days. And I also need to work on my head, work on my headlights. I got uh, I got the back sealed. Um, I got almost all the cube sealed, and then after that, I got to put the ring in and then trim for the cube. Uh, but yeah, that that that's it. That's the uh, 42 inch V series light bar. Uh, I expect it to be bright because the one on my Jeep is bright, and this is this is an extra 10 inches longer. So, hey, I should have just that just I should have that much more light. The one in my the one on my Jeep has proven itself because uh, I went back in the trails not long after I installed it, and man, it, it made the LED headlights made a lot of difference. The aux beam LED headlights, but that light bar. It's the first time I had a light bar like that. I had that little seven inch that I had down here before I put my bumper on. Uh, no. <laughs> get a real light bar they, they, those 5d lenses are amazing too um anyway i'm i'm rambling now so uh i'll compile this try to upload it tonight but it's you know it's probably by the time i get inside get it cut together it's gonna take probably an hour and a half to two hours to render in sony vegas and then it's gonna take another probably two hours to upload so it might be uploaded by 6 o'clock in the morning. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah. I will see you on the next one. Which uh, will probably be maybe a short video on me where I put my switch. Uh, maybe a... No, I'm not going to do a video on the headlights yet. Because um, I don't want to do a video on the headlights till I get... I don't want to do another video on the headlights until I get a full video of building a headlight. So I need to get one of them built. And then I'll go on to the next one. Uh, and when I build the next one, I'll video it. And it's probably going to be a couple of day process because, eh, because these are these are all trickier than the ones on my Jeep. <laughs> that, the one, the square ones on my Jeep are easy. Um, these require, you know, JP Weld, epoxy, and 
all that other stuff and get it set right and blah blah blah. So anyway, talk to y'all later. See y'all in the next one. Bye.